Welcome back to another episode of the Surface Interval with the Dive Monster Talk. I'm Daisy. And I'm Rudy. In today's episode, we talk about a fantastic breathing device which supposedly gives you unlimited air down to a depth of 5 meters of water or 15 feet. You know, almost every dive we make is about an hour, but with this one, it's unlimited. Unlimited. You gotta imagine that for our non-diving friends, scuba divers are of course limited how long they go underwater, A, by the tank, B, by a maximum bottom time you can stay on certain depth, of course C, also by temperature, because one day you may get cold if you stay down there too long, and of course additional by the daylight if you are not equipped with <laughs> unlimited light sources like the sun at night it makes no sense to go diving over the years people try to merge snorkeling and scuba diving here in the philippines we have actually this called this helmet diving in boracay which is absolutely fun and great for people who actually don't dive you know just go down with a helmet and a hose and you can still interact with underwater creatures. While researching for some free diving stuff, we came across a very interesting new device and I thought this is a perfect topic for surface interval. However, before we start talking and going into depth, you better subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss out any of our upcoming dive monster talks did you subscribe do it do it do it okay so let's start the video Well, that video did not say much but it is interesting actually don't you say it's like so Rudy and I actually dug a little deeper into this unlimited air supply and it's actually called exo lung now I'm a little bit skeptical with all the new inventions I remember years back in Tumagete there was a guy who strapped two scuba tanks on a floating device, put a regulator on it the first stage, a hose 20 meters, second stage on the other end and dived down to 15 meters and he was on a forum about Tumagete and was completely convinced that this is better than holes in Swiss cheese. So I rested my case because there was no, no way of discussing with this guy so I'm not sure about that new device and maybe we should have a look how it actually works yeah let's let's have a look divers wear the exo lung on their chest a tube of about five meters attaches the exo lung to a floating safety buoy on the surface with each extension of the legs air is pulled from the surface into the exo lung as the divers legs bend Water pressure expands the diaphragm, compressing the air in the exolung, which the diver can then inhale. Wow, what do you think about it? Well, it's actually quite funny. It's like mixed between a human and a frog. Both can't breathe underwater. I mean, just the kicking, I don't really like that. Now, what do I you am, think? I understand the concept, the kind of. What is about a little bit confusing to me is that you have to kick. Yeah, if well, you don't kick, you can't breathe. Exactly. According to the guy, you have to continue kicking. And the problem is if you have that strap-on thing, which is probably kind of durable, and you continue kicking for an hour, you're just going to have cramps. And if you can't kick, you can't breathe. Now, <laughs> for me as a fat so big guy, there's an additional problem now. 
I'm really positive buoyant, especially mm -hmm. in salt water. Almost each human is buoyant unless they have balls of steel. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna wear a weight belt. If I'm not wearing a weight belt, I have to kick like crazy <laughs> to go down there. Now, if I wear a weight belt, I'm sinking down and then I basically have to kick upwards to even keep my positioning somehow and I have to kick kick kick, kick <laughs> just to, to just to breathe. Well, I found another guy who has actually like a prototype of the exo lung. So let's actually have a look at this guy. Hello guys, today I tested a new device called the exo lung, which lets you breathe underwater. Normally, if you want to breathe underwater, you need a diving tank that is filled with a compressor. But this device is a bit different. It is a container on your chest that works like an external lung. There's a 5 meter long hose that goes up to the surface and works like a snorkel. Then you have straps fastened to your feet, so when you straighten your legs, you pull air into the container on your chest. Then, when you bend your knees and collect your feet, you can breathe the air you just pulled into the external lung. Then, when you straighten your legs again, you pull more air into the container. It took a bit of practice, but as soon as I got the rhythm right, it worked just fine. Breathe in when you collect your feet, breathe out when you straighten your legs. The hose is 5 meters long, which means you can swim down to 5 meters with it. I found it most comfortable to use around 3 to 4 meters. It may be that I'm just not used to the device yet, but at 5 meters I found it got a bit harder to pull air into the external lung and I got a bit tired. I only tested it for around 50 minutes in the pool. Well, um, obviously this is not the official video from the developer, but more like a friend I think, you know, just being a nice guy, doing a quick review. but. Even as a friend, he looks a lot struggling, he looks like very inconvenient for him. I actually saw that guy before, I think his name is Christian Vedoy or something, a North Norwegian magician and really? escape artist. He's on, I have no idea, Tajikistan has talent shows and Spain has talent and Denmark has talent and I don't know, Ndile Zimbabwe has talent. <laughs> anyway, he's that guy, um, you can handcuff, they put a water bucket on his hand and he can hold his breath for something like five hours and uncuff himself. You know, he's that guy, they put concrete boots on his legs, the mafia mob throws him from a bridge and he unties his concrete laces and comes out and is alive and says, hey, I survived and stuff like that. He basically has fantastic freediving tips and he, he can hold his breath from, let's say, Christmas to Eastern without any issues. Wait, wait. Okay, let's, let's have a look at it again. I just want to see something. I found it most comfortable to use around three to four meters. It may be that I'm just not used to the device yet, but at 5 meters I found it got a bit harder to pull air into the external lung and I got a bit tired. So that's obviously a very very fit man, physically fit and still having problems breathing under 5 meters in a few minutes. Well, you gotta see that, it's a prototype. It's a prototype and I guess there's still more development to do on that thing. But you need to consider that even down on 5 meters, the air density is 50% more, so it's much more work you have to do. And the water pressure and the diaphragm of this exolung certainly does not do the same work than the low pressure and your second stage regulator you have in your mouth. Still, it is a kind confusing to me also. Well, that guy actually makes another statement that it's good that you don't fill your lungs completely. Let's have a look! When you're scuba diving, there's always a danger of your lungs rupturing if you fill your lungs completely full and then go straight to the surface without breathing out. Since you, with this device, pull the air into the container with your force of your legs, it is hard to get your lungs completely full. And that is good. The deeper you go, the harder it is to fill your lungs completely full. <laughs> Serious? This is about the biggest pile of horse shit I've heard since a long time. I mean, first of all, 
scuba divers learn from the first second even they before they enter the water for the first time that you never hold your breath yeah. so this is completely nonsense what he's saying <laughs> then add to that you gotta consider so you kicking around like a frog on ecstasy down there and well if you look at that face he doesn't look that relaxed as one of those seven hours breath holding guy and then he tells you you know the last thing you want is no air when you're exercising and he says like no if you can't fill your lungs very <laughs> full completely full that's good it is hard to get your lungs completely full and that is good 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 now, latest at that point, it makes this to a completely laughable video <laughs> and obviously a not so well thought through clip for a friend or something like that. Well, I think it might have some use. Having an unlimited air supply underwater could be hugely useful to people cleaning the underside of their boats, doing underwater repair and maintenance work, underwater videographers, or just people who want to spend long periods of time in the cool, quiet embrace of the deep end of their pool. Well, <laughs> I think we should actually start a fundraiser for our fellow scuba tuber, Brian Davies, because he actually owns a little boat. I want to see him wear the egg so long and try to actually <laughs> clean the hull of his boat, or even better, taking pictures of underwater stuff. You know, imagine just moving, wee! <laughs> Very clear resolution. I mean, the but best thing you need to do is for catching best moments is with an exo lung. Yeah, well, I'm actually, like they say in the video, fine with sitting <laughs> at the deep end of, of the pool as long as it's our inflatable baby pool in the garden <laughs> with a cold beer in my hand and maybe some shower helpers who foam me from back to front and head to tow, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't need an exo lung for that. Well, I still, I'm still up for the idea of having our friend Brian Davis doing that. So, friends of the Suns, we should start a fundraising. We should start let's, a fundraiser. Let's start a fundraiser. <laughs> and and at the end of the day, you know, it could go around through all the scuba tuber. And yeah, and it only costs like 300, according to you, 300, 500, depending on the hose, the meters of the hose, but. That is doable, people. Let's do it. <laughs> Fundraising. Fundraising. Maybe, maybe, maybe the the founder or Christian Vidai, Vidoy Vidai sends us his prototype. Over at Christmas. Come on, have a little Christmas oh, gift. Be, 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 be good to us. Be good to us. Okay, so I guess I completely missed something on that whole device because I'm, I'm slightly confused about that. Me too. <laughs> you slip into that funny socks with yeah. a strap on it, and if you stop kicking, you die. Now that Basically. looks for me more like a bad torture device <laughs> from the dark ages, but not like 21st century. Well, technology changes. <laughs> I just try to paint the picture. So I'm going into Darwin, put on my weight belt, put on the exolang, go yeah. the beautiful shallow corals. It's a little bit choppy, which I can live with. Going down on three meters, kicking my big luput off <laughs> with my weights on, just that I can breathe a little bit. You know, after a couple of minutes, <laughs> I get a cramp. I get a cramp. So I'm, I'm down there, my weights drag me down. With one hand, or with both hands, I'm trying to release the cramp on my fins. With the other leg, I'm like, trying to kick that I can breathe, not even to stay on three meters. The same time, I'm probably tumbling over, over the hard coral, scratch myself everywhere, fire corals going through my back. And somewhere at the very, very, very back of my mind, when I want to breathe, I hear the voice of Christian Vedel. It's good that you can't fill your lungs. That is good. 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 Just... Well, 
Well, we certainly missed something, but we don't want the idea to get down your mind. People should start inventing stuff. That's how things, you know, are actually made. You start inventing, get the stupidest idea, the most brilliant idea, and make something out of it. But again, we we missed something, obviously. So if you find out, <laughs> if you find out, or you have thought what we are missing on, and I'm really serious because we don't want to let this device down. We also put a link to the actual Exolang into the description. So maybe I I misread something. But this is the picture of me falling down some hard coral rocks <laughs> and clownfish are just <laughs> laughing at me. It is just not a practical thing, especially for, you know, a tourist living in the tropics with beautiful coral watching. It's just not the best idea. It's yeah, imagine this 60-year-old retired <laughs> Filipina woman <laughs> are on a bunker at Rock Point East in Apo Island. Yeah. Wearing an egg so long and kicking around. No, that, that doesn't happen. That will just not happen. But again, we're not letting the idea j down. Just the concept of it. <laughs> Us wearing it. It just uh, wouldn't work. Still worth a fundraiser for Prion Davis. Fundraising. Fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. I mean, he still can send it to us, so... Yeah, you know, like borrowing once, you know, weekly. I make a video of... <laughs> Critter Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you actually use that, you you guys might actually, you know, lose some weight, but I'm not saying a significant amount of weight, but imagine you're, you can have strong ass legs, like all muscle, like a ham. <laughs> Your Christmas is coming up. And that's it for this Dive Monster Talk. In the next episodes of Surface Interval, we talk a little bit more about getting drunk underwater <laughs> or something like nitrogen narcosis, as well as the continuation of our underwater video setup where we this time add some lights to everything. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. I'm Daisy. And I'm Rudy. See you in the next Surface Interval. Bye! Bye.